A spear thrower or at lateral is a tool that uses leverage to achieve greater velocity in dart throwing, and includes a bearing surface which allows the user to store energy during the throw. It may consist of a shaft with a cup or a spur at the end that supports and propels the butt of the dart. The spear thrower is held in one hand, gripped near the end farthest from the cup. The dart is thrown by the action of the upper arm and wrist. The throwing arm together with the atlatl acts as a lever. The spear thrower is a low-mass, fast-moving extension of the throwing arm, increasing the length of the lever. This extra length allows the thrower to impart force to the dart over a longer distance, thus imparting more energy and ultimately higher speeds. Common modern ball throwers use the same principle. A spear thrower is a long-range weapon and can readily impart to a projectile speeds of over 150 km per hour. Spear throwers appear very early in human history in several parts of the world, and have survived in use in traditional societies until the present day, as well as being revived in recent years for sporting purposes. In the United States, the Nahuatl word atlatl is often used for revived uses of spear throwers, and in Australia the aboriginal word woomera. The ancient Greeks and Romans used a leather thong or loop, known as an ankula or a mentum, as a spear throwing device. Design Spear thrower designs may include improvements such as thong loops to fit the fingers, the use of flexible shafts, stone balance weights and thinner, highly flexible darts for added power and range. Darts resemble large arrows or thin spears and are typically from 1.2 to 2.7 meters in length and 9 to 16 millimeters in diameter. Another important improvement to the spear thrower's design was the introduction of a small weight strap to its midsection. Some atlatlas maintain that stone weights add mass to the shaft of the device causing resistance to acceleration when swung and resulting in a more forceful and accurate launch of the dart. Others claim that spear thrower weights add only stability to a cast, resulting in greater accuracy. Based on previous work done by William S. Webb, William R. Perkins claims that spear thrower weights commonly called banner stones, and characterized by a centered hole in a symmetrically shaped carved or ground stone, shaped wide and flat with a drilled hole and thus a little like a large wing nut, are a rather ingenious improvement to the design that created a silencing effect when swung. The use of the device would reduce the telltale zip of a swung at lateral to a more subtle woof sound that did not travel as far and was less likely to alert prey. Robert Berg's theory is that the banner stone was carried by hunters as a spindle weight to produce string from natural fibers gathered while hunting, for the purpose of tying on fletching and hafting stone or bone points. Woomera The Woomera design is distinctly different to most other spear throwers, in that it has a curved, hollow shape which allows for it to be used for other purposes. Artistic designs Several Stone Age spear throwers are decorated with carvings of animals. The British Museum has a mammoth, and there is a hyena in France. Many pieces of decorated bone may have belonged to Batin's de Commandment. The Aztec atlatl was often decorated with snake designs and feathers. History Wooden darts were known at least since the Middle Paleolithic. While the spear thrower is capable of casting a dart well over 100 meters, it is most accurately used at distances of 20 meters or less. Seven spears were found in the Sconing and 13 E4 layer, dating from about 400,000 years ago and thought to represent activities of Homo heidelbergensis. The spear thrower is believed to have been in use by Homo sapiens since the Upper Paleolithic. Most stratified European finds come from the Magdalenian. In this period, elaborate pieces, often in the form of animals, are common. The earliest secure data concerning atlatls has come from several caves in France dating to the Upper Paleolithic, about 21,000 to 17,000 years ago. The earliest known example is a 17,500-year-old solitary atlatl made of reindeer antler and found at Coombe-Saunier, France. 
In Europe, the spear thrower was supplemented by the bow and arrow. In the EPI Paleolithic, along with improved ease of use, the bow offered the advantage that the bulk of elastic energy is stored in the throwing device. Rather than the projectile, arrow shafts can therefore be much smaller, and have looser tolerances for spring constant and weight distribution than at lateral darts. This allowed for more forgiving flint napping. Dart heads designed for a particular spear thrower tend to differ in mass by only a few percent. By the Iron Age, the omentum, a strap attached to the shaft, was the standard European mechanism for throwing lighter javelins. The omentum gives not only range, but also spin to the projectile. The spear thrower was used by early Americans as well. It seems to have been introduced to America during the immigration across the Bering Land Bridge. And despite the later introduction of the bow and arrow, that lateral use was widespread at the time of first European contact. Complete wooden spear throwers have been found on dry sites in the western USA, and in waterlogged environments in Florida and Washington. Several Amazonian Indian tribes also used the atlatl for fishing and hunting. Some even preferred this weapon over the bow and arrow, and used it not only in combat but also in sports competitions. Such was the case with the Tarariu, a Tarpuya tribe of migratory foragers and raiders inhabiting the forested mountains and highland savannas of Rio Grande do Norte in mid-17th century. Brazil. Anthropologist Harold Prinz offers the following description. The atlatl, as used by these Tarariu warriors, was unique in shape, about 88 cm long and 3 to 4.5 cm wide. This spear thrower was a tapering piece of wood carved of brown hard wood. Well polished, it was shaped with a semicircular outer half and had a deep groove hollowed out to receive the end of the javelin, which could be engaged by a horizontal wooden peg or spur lashed with a cotton thread to the proximal and narrower end of the throwing board, where a few scarlet parrot feathers were tied for decoration. There, darts or javelins were probably made of a two-meter-long wooden cane with a stone or long and serrated hardwood point sometimes tipped with poison. Equipped with their uniquely grooved atlatl, they could hurl their long darts from a great distance with accuracy, speed, and such deadly force that these easily pierced through the protective armor of the Portuguese or any other enemy. Among the Tlingite of southeast Alaska are approximately one dozen very old elaborately carved specimens they call Xiaan, remain in museum, collections and private collections one having sold at auction for more than $100,000. The people of New Guinea and Australian Aborigines also used spear throwers. In the mid-Holocene, Australians developed spear throwers, known as Woomeras. As well as its practical use as a hunting weapon, it may also have had social effects. John Whitaker, an anthropologist at Grinnell College, Iowa, suggests the device was a social equalizer in that it requires skill rather than muscle power alone. Thus women and children would have been able to participate in hunting, although in recent Australian societies, spear throwers are restricted by custom to male use. Whitaker said the stone-tipped projectiles from the Aztec atlatl were not powerful enough to penetrate Spanish steel plate armor, but they were strong enough to penetrate the mail, leather and cotton armor that most Spanish soldiers wore. Whitaker said the Aztecs started their battles with atlatl darts followed with melee combat using the Macuahuitl, Batons de Commandment. Another type of Stone Age artifact that is sometimes excavated is the Batin de Commandment. These are shorter, normally less than one foot long, and made of antler, with a hole drilled through them. When first found in the 19th century, they were interpreted by French archaeologists to be symbols of authority, like a modern field marshal's baton, and so named Batons de Commandment. Though debate over their function continues, tests with replicas have found them, when used with their cord, very effective aids to spear or dart throwing. Another theory is that they were arrow straighteners, and the examples in the 1920 illustration at right are so labeled. Modern times. 
In modern times, some people have resurrected the dart thrower for sports, often using the term at lateral, throwing either for distance and, or for accuracy. Throws of almost 260 meters have been recorded. Colleges reported to field teams in this event include Grinnell College in Iowa, Franklin Pierce University in New Hampshire, Alfred University in New York, and the University of Vermont. There are numerous tournaments, with spears and spear throwers built with both ancient and with modern materials. Similar devices are available to throw tennis balls for dogs to chase, and in the sport of JLI, at Latala, sometimes used in modern times for hunting. There are meetings and events where people can throw darts. A few examples of the locations of such competitions are in Oregon, Rhode Island and in Lexington, Kentucky held yearly. In the U.S., the Pennsylvania Game Commission has given preliminary approval for the legalization of the atlatl for hunting certain animals. The animals that would be allowed to atlatl hunters have yet to be determined, but attention is focused on deer. Currently, Alabama allows the atlatl for deer hunting, while a handful of other states list the device as legal for rough fish, some game birds and non-game mammals. Starting in 2007, Missouri allowed use of the atlatl for hunting wildlife, and starting in 2010, also allowed deer hunting during the firearms portion of the deer season. Starting in 2012, Missouri allowed the use of atlatls during the fall archery deer and turkey hunting seasons and starting in 2014 allowed the use of atlatl during the spring turkey hunting season as well. Missouri also allows the use of the atlatl for fishing, with some restrictions. The Nebraska Game and Parks Commission allows the use of atlatls for the taking of deer as of 2013. Update the Woomera is still used today by some Australian Aborigines for hunting in remote parts of Australia. Yuppie Eskimo hunters still use the atlatl, known locally as Nukuk, in villages near the mouth of the Yukon River for seal hunting. Competitions Chimney Point State Historic Site in Addison, Vermont hosts the annual Northeast Open Atlatl Championship. In 2009, the 14th Annual Open Atlatl Championship was held on Saturday and Sunday September 19 in 20. On the Friday before the championship, a workshop was open to teach modern and traditional techniques of atlatl and dart construction, flint napping, hafting stone points, and cordage making. The World Atlatl Association stages an annual event of spear throwing at Valley of Fire State Park in Nevada. There was an atlatl competition at the Ohio Paw Paw Festival each year. Another annual atlatl competition is at Bois d Arc Primitive Skills Gathering and Napin, held every September in southern Missouri. Atlatl associations around the world host a number of local atlatl competitions. In the sixth episode of the fourth season of the television competition, Top Shot, the elimination round consisted of two contestants using the atlatl at ranges of 30, 45, and 60 feet.